I got a couple of nice wee jobs on this. It's a 2005 Kawasaki KX 250F. Fitting new chain and sprockets, and I'm checking and going to adjust the valve clearances. Problem is, it's it's no starting on kick over on on the kick start, and it's. I get it backfiring, so first things first, I'm gonna have to order the, the shims up for the the valves. So what I'm gonna do first is get that checked to check the valve clearances so it's off the seat. What I can see there's a bolt there and a bolt there. So I'll get that off. I repositioned the bike in the shed of a of the wee juggle booty things. Right, so what I can see, take the tank off next. Is I've got that strap there, a bolt there. I'll just take the plastics off of the tank as well. So you've got one there and one there. And the same as the other side. Right, so I'll get that off. And I've got the fuel hose to disconnect. You've got the petrol tap up there, so that's off. So I'll get that disconnected. That's the tank off. What I've done, I've just put another wee bit of hose on there to blank that off, just in case any crap falls into the main light of the carburetor. So I've got that. Right, what I was going to do before I check the valve clearances, just so I might a reference, I'm going to check the compressions. So I've pulled that off and I'm going to whip the spark plug out. Compression tester screwed in. WFO SFA Right, so it's next step is to take these two screws out and they are 6mm hex Right, just taking a couple of these screws out it's holding the ignition coil on just so it's a bit easier access to get to that bolt there eight millimeter right so that's all for the cam cover on that screw you've got well the two screws you've got a a sealant ring and you've got a gasket as well on that so i'm gonna have to watch that we're gonna put that back on that there I'll just put the spark plug in because we didn't want anything to drop into the plug hole. Right, now before we do anything else, I want to check, get on top dead center on the compression stroke. Right, so what you're doing, turning it anti clockwise. And you've got a mark. You've got actually two marks. It's the second mark. Obviously, that first mark will be when it should fire. Right, so we've got that there. That's on top dead center. You've got a dot there and a dot there. They're supposed to line up with the the edge the cylinder head basically right. and for me that cam chain's hell of a slack that's actually moved a wee bit so we're wanting that that's a bang on top dead center See that or not? Right. So the next thing we'll get the valve clearances checked. Oh, get up. Now the cam lobes should be facing opposite each other, basically. That's exhaust. That's inlet. Now I've looked up the workshop manual. 
and the valve clearances are exhaust is I'll just show you there exhaust 0.17 to 0.22 millimeters and inlet is 0.10 to 0.15 right so we'll see what this is I'm sure one of the inlet ones there's there's no clearance at all not a sausage right what I've done I've got the feelers and I've got the, the smallest size that it's supposed to be so right so the inlet is 0 0.10 that equates to four thousandths of an inch let's see what we're getting here That's not even gone in. Right, I'll try. Let's try an, an exhaust, which is a matter of interest. Oh, that's gone in. Hooray. Right, let's see. I'll try. Uh, so that's 4,000. So that's tell you it's old imperial sizes. That's what was drummed into my head when I worked in the garage. Right, there's three thou. I've got a feeling it's this valve's staying open. That's why there's no compression. No, that's totally closed. Oh, baby. They make that uh, quite easy to do at all. Yeah, I'm supposed to get it out. Oh, there's a bit clearance in that one. Well, at least the room, there's plenty of room at work on this, it's not bad like but this is just a bit awkward. Right, so that's tight. That was tight. I'm going to have to write down the, the measurements and work out what's made out. Right, the exhaust should be 0.17.22. There's a point one seven for the exhaust. Point two two. Right, I'll try the wider. That uh, point two two. That's nine thou. Right, that's bang on the maximum size, so that's all right. It's the inlets, it's going to be causing me a problem. 
there's that's a two thou feeler. Two thousand even going through that. So there's no gap in that one at all. That one. I just hope it's not damaged the valve. Right, that one. That's got a point seven. No, point zero seven, I should say. Right, so that's your respect, eh? Now I'm taking note of that, so. Right, that's a point Yeah, I can't get to that. That is pretty good, that one. There's a wee bit of slack. Right, that one's all right. That's just on the widest gap. So it's in spec, so I'm, I'm not going to adjust that or that. Because if I decrease the gap on that, it can only get smaller. If you know what I mean. I'd rather have a wider gap than it too tight. So that's all right. That's too tight, and that gap is non-existent. So I think that valve is even. It's not even closing. So, right, I've got the. Right, what I'm gonna have to do next is take this off and see the size of the shims and do a wee calculation. What I'm going to have to do first before I take this off is let the tension of the timing chain. Now I would imagine that the tensioner is in a ratchet 
Now if I slacken that off, it's going to try and tighten the tune. So I'm going to have to have a look at that first and I'll have to and I can't be able to get that off with the carburetor in place or no. Oh, it's getting better. <laughs> right, I've slackened the, the carburetor back. I've taken out the, the wee inlet manifold rubber and I've pulled it out. I think I should be able to get out that. Right, what I'm going to do first is get that 12mm slackened. Oof! It's rather tight. Right off with that. Right, I've got the, the wee eight millimeters. Right, I'll get that off next. Right, I think it would be better actually taking this carburetor right off. We'll see if I can get this off. You didn't really want to make what well, work for yourself. So. I'll have to turn that around a bit. Right. Spring in there. I'll just put that outside there. I think it's raining today for a change. That rain is not stopped out there. We're desperate in the night. Still got all the other bikes on the boat. The CRA 450, that's still lying at a million little bits. The probably RX 50, that's that's just about finished. That's going away tomorrow, hopefully. I'll take a picture of that before it goes. The Derby send up, no touch that again. The wee probably RS50, I've not touched that. In, well, that's two weeks I've had that. I stripped it the first day I got it. It's just other. Bits and pieces to be done. I'll just give that a wee tap there because I'm not want that going into orbit. I don't know what sort of tension. If I put that screw back on, I'll just leave that out for now. That's Never be tempted to jam something in there. You, that'd be the easy option to put something in there and force that out because if you do, you do that, obviously you're, you're going to damage the faces of the.
That's obviously quite tight in that hole, isn't it? Is that the tension of the No way that's coming out. Oh, if that whole thing's turned or something. Oh, that was really tight to come out there. Eh? Really. Right. So that looks like that's full extended near enough. So There'll be a release. I'm sure you push that. There you go. Right, so there's a procedure when you put that back in. Which I'll go through. Right, so we're... Right, so the tension's off of that. So I really just want to take this side off. Then let I'm not touching the exhaust. So this is a wee trick I've done before in the past. You can even do it with cars as well. Just cable tie the the chain onto the, the gears just makes it a bit easier I wouldn't do the harm it coming off like but it's, it's just and it make your life a bit easier right I'll get the, the camera back on top right so I'm going to take these there's the looks like there's four bolts there and it's an 8mm socket I think no. I'm not very sure what tension is in this. Oh, so you know what? Eh? Slacking these off in sequence. I've seen people now. That's obviously up to the individual. Like I've seen people using impact wrenches to slacken these off. As I can't understand that honestly. That's asking for trouble, I think anyway. You kind of feel the, the bolt with that. The thing is, if it's going to be stripped, it's stripped, but I just think it's better than the old fashioned way. So that's me. Instead of taking the box right out and try to get that off, just try and get moving before you take the bolts out. Because I'm I'm sort of gone in the unknown here. I've downloaded a, a workshop manual off of Google Link.
I've done the valve clearances on the, the CRF 450, so I'm going to have to get that. By the time I've done this, I might have even uploaded that, that video. Right, so this is looking pretty good. My back's starting to get sore. That way. There's no shortage of water in Scotland. That's one thing we've got plenty of. Right, that seems slack. Right. I've got a magnet here just in case there's any things floating about. Right, that's one. These are the same length. Right, so the these ones are a different length. There's three short ones and one long one. Right, I'll go down the side here and just make sure there's not gonna go flying. Now you've got two, I suppose you could call them devils, in there. You've got a, a ring there. That'll be to hold that bearing to stop it going from side to side. Is there one of them underneath? I'd imagine there'll be... One, one underneath, right. right. That's it. Good. Looking good. And my back is killing me. I'm doing a job like this, I need something to lean on. <laughs> I thought there was supposed to be two of the wee sort of half moon things. A magnet. So that's got a grip in there, so that's not coming out. Right, we'll take this, this bucket out. This is for the, the right hand side of the inlet. Right, we've got a little shim there. Can you see it? Right, I'll have to measure that. Make sure they get these mixed in. Right, it's quite good that actually they're stuck on. That's obviously just for the oil leak. Right, so that's the left. Right, I'll have to measure these. Calculation. Right, 
Uh, that's how I work it out. You make my writing out. The thing is, the, the formula they give you in the workshop manual, that's giving you if it's a white valve clearance. But this one here is a tight one, so you're going to have to do that the opposite way around, basically. Right, so the gap there was 0 0.07 and I'm ideally looking for 0.15 So the whole shim is 2.89 so you'd want to take 0 0.08 off of that So that's the new shim there Right, this is a wee bit more awkward because there's there's no gap there at all So the old shim is 2.75 so I'm taking off the, the 0.15 off of that so I'm going to have to get a sort of range because I, I haven't got any of these shims so I'm going to order them up and just hopefully I'll, I'll see if there's any any sizes in between that it's pretty straightforward right that's me for the night